Hey guys, what's up? It's Jonathan with One Big Impact. So I'm coming to you today to actually have a video on the biggest low carb mistakes. So let's get started. Okay, so something that people often do is uh, within the first few days, people get really super impatient. So I'm not talking like slightly impatient or whatever, but literally the first couple days they're like, oh, I got a headache or I'm going through just whatever and I'm not really feeling it or whatever. Be patient. If you can make it through the first three days, three, four days, or at least the first week, I promise you it is going to the symptoms will improve dramatically and you will see results extremely fast. So you have to keep that in mind. Be patient, wait through the first few days. It's really not that hard. Uh, if you were like on a regular diet or something like that and you weren't going low carb, trust me, the results are far slower and this is a much quicker rapid way to lose weight. So definitely keep that in mind. The next thing is that you have to remember that keto flu may happen to you or may not happen to you. If you're lacking energy, say you're getting headaches, you're feeling lethargic, sluggish, kind of lacking just whatever all overall emphasis in just daily life, well then you're probably experiencing keto flu. And I'll put a link to the description in the description below. Also, you can search on YouTube keto flu one big impact and my videos will come up. Uh, but I will put the description or link in the description below. The the next thing is that a lot of people think or assume that a low carb regimen is actually just eating loads of meat and loads of uh, fat, and you know, or or they go to keto and they're like, well, I just got to eat lots of meat and lots of cheese and I'm good to go. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, you have something called glu gluconeogenesis that will happen where your body will actually convert uh, <clears throat> the actual extra protein into glucose and then store it as fat if you're not using it, which most people aren't going to use that much. So you definitely have to keep that in mind. Too much protein is a real thing and you don't want to eat. Usually if you're super active, you want to be about one gram per pound of body weight per day. So a good general rule of thumb is, uh, no pun intended, but your palm is actually uh, about the size of the meat that you should be eating and about the thickness. So a deck of cards is about what you should be eating as protein about three times a day. So four to six ounces, three times a day is usually good. If you're a bodybuilder or whatever, you wanna kick it up to about 1.5, but you really don't wanna go much further than that. So keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of people, the next thing is, a lot of people think that too much exercise is a real thing. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, I don't want you to count calories and stuff like that. But the reality is, if you want to lose weight, you have to be expending more energy than what you're pulling in. Uh, glucose and, or this low carb, uh, a low carb regimen like Atkins and stuff like that, work on a little bit different principle by limiting the carbs on hydrate, carbohydrates and sugars within your body so you become fat adapted so your body is actually adapted to eating the fat that it's inside your body as well as, as for its primary fuel and energy source as well as using the fats that you bring in like avocados olive oils olives um, and cheeses and stuff like that as its fuel source so your body becomes fat adapted but you you can't think that too much exercise is a bad thing because honestly, I think the more you exercise, the better you're off you're gonna be, the more active you are, the lighter you are, the better you feel. So overall, it's just a win-win. Definitely keep that in mind. The next thing is a lot of people do this quite often, low salt. And because a low carb regimen is naturally diuretic and it also is you're drinking tons more water if you drink if you're following a low carb regimen like my low carb regimen you should be drinking at least a gallon of water a day if you're not and i'm looking for my water if you're not then you need to kick it up a notch but you're already naturally going to be eating far less salt than you were in a daily diet as far as like eating fast food and stuff like that there's loads of salt in there. So you make it sluggish and stuff like that. A lot of the times, if you're that type of person where you're susceptible to keto flu and stuff like that, I recommend at least adding one to two warm cups of 
uh, chicken broth per day and usually that's a pretty good remedy but remember it's not going to hurt you to add extra salt on everything it's perfectly fine unless your doctor says not to but usually even so it's not going to be a big deal the next thing is thinking one bad meal is not going to hurt you a lot of people I hear this all the time they're like well you know uh, it's just one meal it's just one bad meal or whatever well on the basis of a low carb regimen you're actually going into a ketogenic state which is ketosis so if you're not following um, the regimen and you pop out and just you know want to eat whatever for one day that's cool but realize you're not going to start back on and actually losing again for a minimum of like three or four days usually about three days to hit ketosis about four days before you see any kind of loss again so definitely keep that in mind one meal can definitely be a bad thing the next thing is uh, not doing your homework if you're new here obviously the first thing I want you to do is watch tons of videos that are on my channel I cover so many things and I'm not saying that is like in a conceited way or whatever what I'm saying is if you're new here watch the videos because the videos have the information I started this whole process and everything because I wanted to be able to help others get a better understanding about what low carb is about how to lose the weight I lost 150 pounds so I'm trying to share that with you and you have to know that I'm covering it as much as possible if there's something I'm not covering in the channel please let me know chances are I've covered it you just can't find it <laughs> because of my ability to uh, organize or whatever so definitely keep that in mind um, I do my best to be able to organize it but if I fail to put them in a pr proper organization where you can't find them please let me know I'll go find it for you and send you the link the next biggest mistake is a lot of people don't understand that all, all of your all of your carbohydrates well about 99.9% .9 of your carbohydrates when you're following the low carb diet need to be under the circumstances of vegetables only and those are low starch vegetables like broccoli cauliflower mushrooms uh, cucumbers brussels sprouts and things like that you don't want to be eating like potatoes carrots and things like that you have to definitely keep that in mind and the next thing is like I said before is knowledge if you don't understand what you're doing pick up a book and it doesn't really matter because a lot of the people whatever the book that you pick up is as long as it's low carb based because it's gonna give you a pretty good understanding if it's Atkins that you're doing I recommend you put it pick up an Atkins book if you're doing keto pick up a keto book I'll put links to the in the description below for all types of books that could be keto based Atkins based low carb based South Beach based whatever it is just kind of realize that they operate off of basically the same basic principles if you're doing one specific one like say you're doing Atkins I recommend that you probably follow an Atkins book because it's going to give you a really much more clear image of what you're actually trying to achieve the next thing is don't guess at anything um, don't guess at your measurements don't guess at your uh, how much your food weighs don't guess at what you can you know pick up at a store don't guess that you have something prepared at home when you're not really sure um, you don't want to guess at anything I'm putting links in the description below for measuring cups large measuring cups small measuring cups uh, because I'm gonna be completely honest you don't know what a tablespoon is you can't eyeball it and neither can I and if you can you probably don't need help here <laughs> and you're probably not here but for the most of us we need to be able to measure these I'm also going to put a link in the description below to a food scale a bathroom scale uh, a ribbon to be able to measure yourself and and that is not something that you need to ever think that you just can wing it because you can't um, would you ever go to the store and you know offer you know they tell you it's five pounds for five dollars five dollars for five pounds of potatoes would you you know let them wing it and give you four pounds or three and a half pounds one day no if you want something specific if you want specific results and you want to get the work that you're getting into it you have to be specific 
Another thing that I was going to tell you about is you can't dabble in this. This is not something that you can kind of follow. If you want to get results, you're going to have to follow it completely. It's not something that I want you to just kind of do some days, kind of not do other days or whatever, because if you want specific results, be specific on what you do. The next thing is meal preparation. That is by far one of the biggest mistakes. And the reason for that is because we've learned these bad habits about eating horrible foods or making bad food choices or getting in situations to where we just don't even care anymore. Um, and if you're actually wanting to make a change, you're going to have to prepare your meals weekly. I recommend seven days in advance. And the reason I recommend that is because that gets you through Monday through Monday through Sunday. You can prep on Sunday. Usually people are off. If you have a different kind of schedule, uh, prep on your day off. It doesn't take more than an hour or two um, to prep for an entire seven days. And think about all the time, money, and effort you'll save if you literally only cram it into one little section of time. Get all your stuff Ziploc bagged up. I'll put any links into the description below of stuff that I use when I meal prep. But you have to keep that in mind. If you want success, you're going to have to meal prep for that. That's for sure. Uh, a couple of other things is starting off way too complicated with your meal plans. Now, I offer some meal plans um, in the Facebook group, Healthy Living for a Healthy Life. If you're interested, go check us out, add us. We request that you answer a couple questions because we want to make sure you're not a bot. If you're selling stuff, stay out because we're not. Um, also, don't get complicated because if you don't understand the basics and you're new here or you're new to low carb regimen, uh, if you have 50 ingredients in a food, in a meal, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder to pinpoint what's making you not lose weight or stay out of ketosis or not see results as fast as you are as opposed to if you're eating something that has three ingredients, meaning your vegetable, your cheese, and your protein. Because chances are, if it's this basic versus this basic, um, you're going to be able to have a much more even success rate at that point. The next thing is... Let me see if I got anything else to talk about. Oh, the, one of the most important things is comparing yourself to others. Don't compare yourself to others. I am a fast weight loss loser. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a loser, but I'm saying I lose weight fast. And generally, men tend to lose weight faster, and that might be because they burn calories, but that's not always the case. Um, you have to remember, like on the One Big Impact 30 Day Challenge, three women won. Three women. And there was like 10 guys that joined, okay? And it was uh, one person, Tasha won 47 pounds, uh, lost 47 pounds in one month. Uh, Virginia was at 24 pounds lost, and Sue was at 18 pounds lost. So you guys got to keep that in mind. Like, it's not uh, a gender game or anything like that, it's just how your body responds. But like I'm saying is you may be a woman that's 60 years old and you may be lose weight 10 times faster than me, you know, if you're strict on everything or five times slower or whatever. It doesn't matter. What what matters is as long as you know that you're being honest and you're following everything, just give it time. Your results are coming. Everybody hits their marks at different paces and that's okay because that's what makes us different and unique and we're all at different levels of, of life and stress and happiness and different things. So keep that in mind, you guys. If you're new here, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Also, check us out on Facebook at Healthy Living for a Healthy Life. Remember to spread love, not hate, and hashtag be stronger than your excuses. Peace, guys.